Hey everyone, welcome to today's video and we are here again in our kitchen. It is a rainy day outside in Charlotte. It's 44 degrees, so we're gonna stay indoors. We're gonna do some more seed starting for you today. And today I'm talking about my personal favorite, fox gloves. So stay tuned if you've never grown fox gloves before. We've got all of our tips and tricks, all of our experience, and then I'm gonna pot some up for you at the end. So if you haven't grown foxgloves before, they are an incredible biennial perennial that you can start indoors. You can also start outside and do some winter sowing. Um, as for us, we do all of ours here indoors. Uh, our experience, we've been growing these for a couple of years now, and I believe that they are one of the easiest perennials that you can start from seed, and you can get beautiful flowers to put in your garden at a very cheap cost. So each of these packets of seeds I have here in front of me costs about five bucks, uh, and there are roughly 50 seeds in each of them. So if you think about the cost for a $5 packet of seed versus going out and buying foxgloves, which can run anywhere from $8 all the way up to maybe $15, $20, depending on what variety you're purchasing, you can get so much impact for a little amount of money, um, and that's why I love fox gloves. So you'll start them just as any other seed. You'll start them in your seed growing tray with your seed starting mix, and they will come up in about a week or two, and as you know, we do not thin any of our seeds that we start, so we'll have uh, roughly two foxgloves in each of these cells here. If you do some quick math, there's 24 cells, which means we're going to end up with 48 foxgloves in the end, which is an insane amount. So if you don't have the space to plant all of those foxgloves, you can give them away. We've even grown them in containers before. They're a great container perennial. Um, once they start to come up, if you decide not to thin them, about the six to eight week mark, you'll want to bump them up into their own separate containers, which we will show you here in a few weeks. Um, you'll simply zhuzh the roots apart, pop them up in a slightly bigger container, and let them grow on some more before you transplant them outside. Once they get outside, you can put some biotone starter fertilizer in the hole, pop them in the ground, and you don't have to do anything else. You can keep them watered very easily. They don't require a lot of supplemental water. You don't have to weekly fertilize them like some of our annuals, some of our perennials even require that. You just let them go, and once we get some really consistent heat, they will start to push up those bloom stalks for you, and depending on the variety that you get, they can be anywhere from two to six, seven feet tall sometimes. Um, for us, they start to bloom usually sometime in June, and you can let that bloom fully go out, form the seed pods, and then kind of shake it around, and maybe you'll get some box gloves to come up naturally next year, or you can cut that bloom stalk off as it starts to go out of flower, and you may get some slightly smaller side shoots that come up if you want some additional color. For us, we usually let them go their full life cycle, let the seeds shake all around, um, and we've had some come up very naturally. Um, so a couple of fun facts about foxgloves that you may not know. They are from the Digitalis family. Um, there's a few different kinds of Digitalis, um, but foxgloves in particular are Digitalis purpurea? Digitalis purpurea? How do you think you say that? Purpurea. <laughs> anyway, Digitalis purpurea. And these are going to be typically a biennial. So if you've never heard that term before, that means it takes two full growing seasons for them to bloom. Now, I know that sounds like a long process. And for us, we have been lucky enough to find foxgloves that actually bloom the first year. So if you are in the market for foxgloves that bloom the very first year that you start them, check out the Camelot series of foxgloves. You can find them from a variety of seed retailers online. Um, we found ours at Johnny Seeds. In the past, we have grown Camelot White, uh, which is not as prolific as some of the other varieties. We've grown Camelot Cream and Camelot Lavender. The Lavender is personally my favorite. Um, and there's another one that actually grows the first year called Dalmatian Peach, uh, which you may have seen. It's a very popular one uh, in the gardening world. All of those are gonna be about two to three feet tall. Uh, you'll get the bottom with foliage and then a bloom stalk that's maybe a foot and a half or uh, two feet tall. 
Um, like I said, they will not bloom until about June time frame. So you want to pop them with some other things that are maybe blooming early or blooming later. Um, like I said, you can even pop them in a container for a fun surprise later on in the season. Now, if you're interested in doing the waiting game and growing some that are the biennial, the original type that bloom the second year, um, we've got a couple that we're going to be popping in uh, the seed tray today. We've got Pink Gen, we've got Pam's Choice, and I've also got, got Apricot Beauty. Um, and we have never grown the biennial type before because we are very impatient. So this is going to be an experiment for us. Um, for the second year foxgloves, we're going to make sure that we put them in a spot that gets a little bit of afternoon shade just because it gets so hot here and so humid. We want to give them a little bit of a break um, towards the end of the day so that hopefully in their first year they don't fry out and they will in fact come back for us next year and bloom. All an experiment, I may be completely wrong in that uh, advice, but we're going to try it and see how it goes. Um, now, something to consider is that foxgloves are actually a poisonous perennial. So if you have pets, dogs, cats, you want to make sure that you put these in a spot where they are not going to get into your flower bed and eat them um, because it is poisonous, toxic. You may be up for an expensive vet bill, which does not sound like fun. Um, as for us, we have two dogs. They've never offered to bother them at all. Um, so we tend to plant them wherever we can in the garden, wherever we can see them. Um, my favorite spot is in the trellis cottage bed, which is right outside of our bedroom window. And as they start to bloom, they just kind of peek up over the bottom of the window. So when you wake up in the morning, you can see the blooms, which is a really, really peaceful way to start your day. So one of the hacks that we have figured out with foxgloves is that they love fertilizer when they are in these seed trays. So our first year growing foxgloves, we did not fertilize them at all. We had horrible lighting. I'll find some pictures and pop them up here for you guys. And they were so lanky, we had to pot them up several times and kind of put them farther down in the soil. Um, and they went out into the garden, they did bloom, but it was a struggle and it was a scary process throughout. So we upped our lighting game last year and I started to fertilize them with the Espoma Grow or Indoor Fertilizer and it made a world of difference. We got much hardier foxgloves. By the time they were, I don't know, eight, nine weeks old, I could have popped those suckers outside and they would have done fabulous. But we waited until, of course, you know, the last frost was gone and we had some big beefy impact in the garden almost immediately just with the foliage. So if you're looking to get a jump start on your foxgloves, get them to be bigger plants, would highly suggest using some kind of fertilizer. Now it does not have to be this one, but you want to make sure that what you're getting um, is a liquid fertilizer. It's just a little bit more concentrated that way. You have more control over the dosage and you want to make sure that you're starting at a quarter of a strength and then moving your way up gradually every few weeks. So if you look on the back of your fertilizer container, there will be information on the dosage of normal fertilizer mixture. Um, so you wanna take that, multiply it by 0.25, and that's a quarter of a strength. Another thing that I love about foxgloves is that they are an amazing pollinator attractor. They have these little bell blooms and the bees just crawl right up in there and get all of that pollen. Um, we've even seen hummingbirds be attracted to them. So if you're looking for a way to attract more pollinators to your garden, this is a great plant to add. Sometimes we've even found the bees asleep inside of the pell, uh, which is really cute. Uh, they just kind of get drunk off of the pollen, um, and it's, it's just a fun thing to have in your garden. Now I will say, if you're growing foxgloves indoors, make sure you know what your last frost date is. Foxgloves take a very long time to get going, so you want to sow these 10 to 12 weeks before your last frost date. If you start any later than that, you're going to run into an issue of trying to plant them out when it's way too hot and you're going to have to add so much supplemental water. If you start before that, you're going to be overrun with this big giant plant in your house. You're going to have to add a lot of water to your plants and it's just gonna make for a hassle. So the sweet spot is somewhere between 10 to 12 weeks. Of course, spring is different every year, so whatever that last frost date is, it's not 
a hard and final date. You're going to have to keep track of the weather, uh, but it's a good gauge to know when you should start your foxgloves. Okay, so I hope these foxglove tips have been helpful for you all. This is just our experience. We definitely don't know everything, but we have learned a lot over the past few years growing them. They're an incredible perennial to attract pollinators to your garden, and they just add that whimsical cottage feel um, that I personally really love. Uh, so I'm going to get started here planting the seeds, but I want to run through the varieties that I'm planting one more time. So for our biennial varieties, we're planting Pink Gin, Pam's Choice, and Apricot Beauty. And then for our first year bloomers, so we'll get to see the color this year in June, we have Camelot Cream, Camelot Lavender, Camelot Rose, and Dalmatian Peach. Um, okay. With all of that, let me get my hands in the dirt and get started. All right, so that is it for starting foxgloves. Now, like I said, I've never planted the biennial variety before, and those seeds were so small, it was practically dust in my hand. So I just kind of like sprinkled them in the cells. Um, definitely gonna have to thin those, I'm sure. Now for the pelleted varieties, um, I usually try to do uh, two seeds in each cell and in opposite corners, so they're at the farthest possible distance um, away from each other and then once we're ready to bump them up there you can easily pull them apart but the biennial it's going to be interesting to see how those come up that's for sure um, now we've got this in the self-watering seed starting kit from gardener supply um, i don't have the the reservoir filled with water yet we usually wait until the seeds have sprouted before we fill it um, but we go ahead and pump the dome on top and then once we get germination, we'll pop the dome off. And then the, the last thing I wanted to say is that foxglove seeds do require light to germinate. So you want to make sure that you do not cover them with soil. I did put a very, very, very light layer of vermiculite on top just to help us with algae and mold. Uh, but they do need light to germinate. So I'm going to pop these under the grow light right after this. But I hope this inspired you guys to grow some foxgloves this year, attract those pollinators, and have some gorgeous cottage flowers in your garden. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel below. We post videos every Wednesday with brand new gardening content showing you our experience and our journey here building our garden in Charlotte, North Carolina, Zone 7B. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!